Hello, my name is Holden Wright, and I am applying as a character animator for the job listing. I appreciate you taking the time to look at this interview and potentially consider me for your team moving forward. When discussing the character animator position, I believe it's important to first discuss the qualifications and the skills required of said position. Um, the skills that are required range from both soft to technical. If we look at soft skills, I believe that the ability to work in a team, the ability to communicate, and the ability to effectively get products finished take priority over everything. Animation is not a solo project. It can be, but for most work, it needs to be in a group and therefore needs to be handled professionally and effectively. I think for technical skills, you must have a base understanding of both anatomy and movement and study and practice relentlessly to hone those skills and keep them up to par with competitors. You also need to just enjoy making the craft itself. It's a very taxing and difficult job, but I think with the right team and the right motivation, it can be one of the most fun and interesting jobs. With that said, I'd like to discuss the creative process that goes into me creating these animations, whether they're personal or for work or for school. And I think where we start with the creative process is research. In order to create something, you must first understand what you're creating. And the best guideline or base to start with is understanding how others have made similar or maybe even completely different animations or art pieces that you can draw inspiration from. So research is always mandatory. It is always the first thing that I do. I look up um, animations that would inspire me. I look up techniques and skills that I may need. I, dec uh, I decide from there whether or not I need to do character rigging, if I need just hand animation itself, what what softwares I will use, whether I need to be using both Toon Boom and After Effects or strictly Toon Boom, will I need Premiere in this project? And then from there, once the research is finished, I go into the idealization of said project. I always have a baseline going into it. However, it's never fully formed until I do that research. I don't think any idea is truly formed until you have substantial evidence to back it up. From there, once I finalize my idea, um, I discuss if it's within a team or if it's within a workforce or for school and I need to communicate with others, I will then communicate with them about where our process needs to lie, who needs to work on what, how we need to work on it together as a team or separate. Or if it's just for myself, right out of the gate, I jump on it and work to my heart's content. I pace myself as best as I can, but I do work quite a lot. Actually, I really enjoy creating things, and I enjoy art itself, and so I have a hard time making sure that I take the proper break times and proper rest in order to completely go through the project without burnout. I very rarely experience it because I force myself to prioritize staying healthy and effective in order to create more projects long term. Uh, that way I can be an asset to all teams or for myself in the future. I go through the proper programs, I export the correct scenes, whether it's straight from Animate to After Effects or a special node system created in Toon Boom to properly mask or have multiple layers of set animations to use. And from there, I render it out and present it into either my own YouTube, my own workspace, or I present it to my team, who then will criticize it. We will work together to make sure it fits the guidelines, and then from there, finalize the project for presentation work. I think the best way to measure success for personal reasons is to see if you're always improving. Art is difficult for me. It's something that, as I said before, I enjoy, but it's never easy. It doesn't come easy. It's something that always requires work. 
And so because of that, you can feel very disheartened if you're not seeing leaps and bounds, if you're comparing yourself to other individuals. Therefore, I think it's smart to compare yourself to your past self and see if you are improving. Sometimes you may be, sometimes you might not be. I have gone through periods of stagnation in my work where I feel like I haven't improved at all. However, I think that's unfair to judge yourself as that and focus on making sure that you're able to work effectively every day and practice as much as you can while still enjoying the craft to be able to proceed and get better. As long as you're improving, as long as you're besting yourself from the previous day, then I believe that is good enough. For the professional setting, it is a little bit different. I still consider that mentality of besting yourself and always improving and striving for better to be paramount. However, with that, you must also recognize the company you work for and the work level you must create. You must look at your peers because you are working with your peers to create something incredible. So to measure success for professional work, company work, or solo work, it's how well do you meet deadlines? How effectively can you create this product? How intelligently can you do uh, the work from this project so you're not scrambling between all these different programs without any idea of how to process it? And I also measure it based on how well it is received within your company. If you are paid to do a job and they are very happy with your work, then I think that itself is success. However, if you look at it and they decide that you didn't properly match the colors they specified or your anatomy is completely off or you use the wrong style of animation, you didn't match the characters, you essentially lied about your skill level, bringing failure to the team slash the company when you are paid to do a job is how I measure failure or success professionally. I think it's important to always improve, but at the end of the day, you are paid to do a job, so you must get that job done as well and as effectively as possible. Thank you for taking the time to look at this interview. I hope you all have a wonderful day and consider me for this position. Thank you very much.